Welcome to our mostly unscripted and unedited podcast. I'm Paula Kidd, nutritionist. And I'm her sister-in-law and bestie, Sarah Kidd. We love discussing all things related to health, including mindset, self-care, and nutrition. Join us as we share coffee, laughs, recipes, and random thoughts tossed in for good measure. <laughs> You'll leave each conversation feeling motivated and with actionable strategies that you can use right away to improve your health and help you stop feeling fat, foggy, and fatigued. See you there. Welcome back. I'm Paulette Kidd, registered holistic nutritionist, and my sister in law, Sarah Kidd, here, professional guinea pig and fan <laughs> of everything Paulette does. <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny. Like a lot of times people will ask me for nutrition advice, but I know that they're not following it. Like I run into them later or whatever they don't do, but I feel like that is not the case with you. Like Mm -hmm. when you ask me for advice, you actually want it and you actually put it into practice. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll do it forever, but you actually try it. So I appreciate that. Yeah. That's why you're such a good guinea pig. (laughs) Yeah. I'm a great guinea pig. I'm so amazing at being a guinea pig. I really like your nails, by the way. Um, oh, it's a very pretty color. I actually was in the drugstore the other day and I saw a new color in my favorite nail polish brand and I really wanted to get it. It was, I don't usually go for really dark colors, but it was like a dark teal and it had a shimmer to it. And I just love turquoise in any range or shade. And I really wanted to get it. It was even on sale, but I didn't because I was trying to not make, you know, a lot of impulse buys. And now Mm -hmm. I just regret it. I just wish that Mm -hmm. I had beautiful nails like you that I painted and that are all like, you know. Yeah. I don't want to make you feel bad. So I'll just, I don't know how I, I don't know how I'm going to pick up my cup, but (laughs) for for those of you listening and not looking, Paulette is now hiding all of her fingernails. And so she will not be able to drink her drink. What is in your drink, by the way? Yeah. Okay. So in the last (laughs) podcast, you showed me your beautiful white textured David's tea mug. So I'm going to show you mine, which I bought. You can't even see the texture in this camera, but but I don't even need to go really close. What is happening? It's very subtle. It's a very subtle texture. It It reminds me of It reminds me of like a cable knit sweater, but a fine, like in a very fine knit, that's kind of what it's like. Oh, that's And it's a creamy white color and it's a very delicate mug. I just love it. And And I I just bought it at the dollar store. See, and I can't help but notice that you're just showing off your nails again. Like, yeah, you're just trying to rub it. (laughs) I'm gonna, how's that? Now you can't see them. I'm like folding. (laughs) Please don't spill your hot drink on yourself because you're not using it. And what am I drinking? So I am drinking a peach matcha latte whoa See, that's five times fast i do not so it's you. david's tea it's a matcha powder i was in there the other day and i matcha is really good for you like it's got lots of antioxidants and it's got l-theanine which is an amino acid that really helps with brain alertness but it doesn't mm. give you that jitteriness that like a caffeinated beverage would it does have caffeine in it but the l-theanine kind of smooths it over so you get that mental alertness without the jitteriness mm. and because it's later in the day and i've already had a couple of coffees and i've had a couple of teas so i'm going to try this out but i don't love the flavor of matcha plain matcha mm. is very earthy grassy like- it's it's okay but it's like lawn clippings ground kind of like that. Yeah. So you feel like you're eating or drinking something healthy, (laughs) which is not a bad thing, but so they have flavored matchas, but most of the flavored matchas that I've seen have there's like have sugar or some kind of artificial sweetener. Right. So when I went into David's tea the other day, I asked, do you have any matchas that are not that are flavored, but not sweetened. And they only had one and it was peach. And I think it's new because I have others that they have. And so it's a peach matcha. And, and then I just, I put boiling water in it and then maybe like a quarter cup of cream to make it more of a latte kind of thing of heavy cream. So the other thing that like, so matcha, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's basically green tea leaves they're dried and then pulverized into a powder. And so you're actually consuming the whole tea leaf in in that way. So it's different from like green tea in a bag where you're still getting some benefits there, but you're not actually consuming the whole plant. So Mm -hmm. that's why the matcha is so high in antioxidants because it's basically a green plant, but it doesn't dissolve. It's just a very fine powder. It doesn't actually dissolve in the liquid. So you have to use a whisk to, to, 
mix it in. So I'll just show you how I do it. I think there are like fancy whisks you can get, but I just put my little silver whisk in there and I just rub it between my hands like that. So I would do that with any kind of anything I wanted to dissolve in hot liquid or, or mix in a hot liquid rather than having to get it a blender and do it all that way. This is really fast and it works just as well. So I wanted to share that. Very nice. Yeah. So it smells really nice. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm drinking. What are you drinking? Well, I just wanted to ask a question. So when you whisk it yeah. to blend it, does it taste kind of, is it gritty, like a gritty texture because it doesn't dissolve or <clears throat> when I don't whisk notice it, it. Yeah. I don't notice it when I'm like drinking the majority of it. When I get down to the bottom, there's always a little bit of sediment there. So that okay. last couple, that last mouthful or last couple of mouthfuls, you sometimes get that, that residue yeah. in there, but yeah. it's healthy. I just tell myself them it's antioxidants drink the antioxidants yeah the gritty <laughs> grainy yeah. antioxidants that taste like grass clippings <laughs> with slight peach flavor yeah <laughs> well that's good to know that they're maybe starting to experiment with some unsugared unsug ones that's not the right yeah. unsweetened ones because yeah I know we talked because about I, that before yeah I would rather add my own sweetener and then yeah. I can add the amount that I want and the type that I want. And so exactly. my preference would be like a, a swerve brown sugar. That's what I would put. And just a little bit, just to get a hint yeah. of sweetness. Yeah. That's so, my favorite too. Yeah. So what I'm drinking, and I think we should probably say that we are not endorsed by David's tea. And that yeah, we should. Although if they want to sponsor our podcast, <laughs> they would be welcome to they do so. Welcome. Yeah. They will get lots yeah. of advertising because here mm -hmm. is my David's tea mug. Now this, oh. little, num this little number here is mm -hmm. a pretty old one. It's got penguins on it. It's dark blue and it's got a starry night and penguins and in the snow Christmas and they're trees. putting, yes, it is Christmassy. I'm not done <clears throat> with Christmassy things, even though we're past Christmas. It's been so gray and dreary for the last week where mm -hmm. I'm living, like literally rain and gray. It's like, yeah. where is the sun? Yeah. There is no more sun. Um, mm -hmm. So until the sun comes back, I'm leaving Christmassy things out and about mm -hmm. to cheer me up and provide yeah. me with some coziness. So anyway, in my inside my awesome mug that I love is a chai tea that they had recently and I haven't seen it on the website. So I hope it's coming back, but maybe it's not in mm. season right now. It's uh, I hope I'm saying it correctly. It's ashwagandha chai. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's got all of the spices that a traditional chai would have. So the cardamom, the cinnamon, the cloves, uh, some ginger, and and I'm not sure if I'm missing anything, peppercorns probably. And then mm -hmm. it's got this special ashwagandha root that I think just has some properties that mm -hmm. are sort of relaxing and calming. I, I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what no, it's you're right. Yeah. And really good, really mm. nice herbal tea I to have. I haven't tried that one. So ashwagandha is an adaptogen is what we call it. And okay. it's, it's a, like an herbal thing, like you said, like a root vegetable, and it helps with, with relaxation, with stress, it helps your adrenal glands. There's all kinds of different adaptogens and they all, they all work similarly, like have similar mm. properties, but they're, but they are a little different. So that's interesting. That's in a tea. You try that yeah. one. Yeah. And I don't notice a distinct flavor. Like sometimes if you have a specialty ingredient like that, it might have a weird taste. I don't yeah. notice it at all. I, I just love the full bodied spiciness and flavor mm -hmm. of, of the chai varieties. Yeah. So yeah, I really enjoy this one, especially at night. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I nice. was going to say about your Christmas mug, like I, well, you mentioned this in the last episode too about David's tea mugs that they are they're large, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of David's tea Christmas mugs, and you'll find me using them at any time of year because I like the size of them. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes I want that big mug of whatever. Mm -hmm. They're always in my cupboard. <laughs> I don't use the Christmas ones all year round, but I have David's tea mugs that are non Christmas Eve because I love mm -hmm. their mugs all year round. And yeah, yeah. I like the yeah. size of it, especially for herbal tea. Then you get a nice, good size hydration. So it's all, it's rainy and dreary here too. So you notice my little fairy lights in the background there. So nice. I just, they make the room cozy and I've invested in some more lights. So I'm going to put them around my house because they make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> and my Christmas tree is still up. In fact, it's lit right now. So but, is mine. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. And yes. we'll talk more about that in a future podcast as well. Yes. We? A, a yes. winter themed podcast. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. So last in the last podcast, we talked a little bit about the mindset involved in making a health change and, and getting in the right mindset by not waiting to feel motivated because that may or may not happen but you don't need to be motivated to get started. It's about making a decision, making a decision to get started, making a decision to put your health first, to make that a priority and starting, just figuring out one small step you can do, start now, that will help you to gain momentum because you'll make a little bit of progress. Then you will have some momentum and that can be your motivation. And, and also just to know that it's normal to not feel motivated all the time. And that does not mean you should quit. It doesn't mean that it's not working. There's all kinds of reasons why we don't feel motivated, right? It could be lack of sleep. It could be stress. It could be just be, being busy. It could have, it could be like your kids are driving you crazy. So you just feel like forgetting everything. There's all yeah. kinds of reasons that we feel that way, but that doesn't mean you should quit. So that's what we were chatting about. So we're going to dive in a little deeper. We're going to talk about the language that we use around being healthy, eating healthy, about ourselves, our personality, our abilities. Yep. We'll talk about some of the most common things that we hear in women over the age of 35 who are struggling with feeling fat, foggy, and fatigued. And we're going to talk about alternative phrases that you can use that still feel true that will help you to reach your goal instead of keeping you stuck or having you feel like you should quit. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Exactly. The stories that we tell ourselves, Mm -hmm. the stories that we may not realize we're telling ourselves that may or may not be fully true, or that may just be of a different perspective of an unhelpful perspective, as opposed to a helpful perspective. It's about making a decision. You have a choice to think something differently, to say something differently. Like you can change that story, the story going forward. So should we start with maybe just giving some examples of some of the negative or not helpful language that people use? Yeah. Well, the mug that I had in our very first episode, which was my favorite mug because it's new, it says, you know, a funny thing. It says, how about no? (laughs) And I think that is just supposed to be cheeky and funny. In other words, like my answer is no to whatever it is you're asking me. I don't want to do whatever it is, or I don't want (laughs) to. I think it's helpful from the perspective of maybe saying no to things that we should be saying no to. And that may be a future podcast um, Mm -hmm. idea, but I, I was thinking about that and thinking, you know, if you think about it in terms of making a decision to start doing something, I think like, are we telling ourselves, oh, how about no? How about just changing it to how about yes, instead of how about no, in terms of like starting something good. And yeah. It can be as simple as that to just completely change the thinking. Right. right. So some of the phrases that I hear a lot from women in my community is like, I'm an emotional eater. I'm a stress mm-hmm. eater. I just don't have the discipline. I don't have the self-control. I don't have the willpower. Willpower. Yes. I, I just can't stay consistent. Mm-hmm. Like, or it, nothing works for me. That's another big mm-hmm. one. Like. So, I mean, you could look at it even logically. Is it really true that nothing works for you? Have you tried everything? Mm -hmm. Probably not. And even if you feel like you have tried everything, have you actually given it adequate time to know for sure that it doesn't work for you? I would say probably most of the time you haven't, (laughs) right? Yeah. It makes me think of something that we talk to our students about at school. There's this phrase, before you speak, think. And then Mm -hmm. think is an acronym that, that stands for different things. So is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Mm -hmm. Is it necessary? Is it kind? And, you know, trying to get, get our students to think before they speak and act on impulses. And Mm -hmm. it's almost like that makes me think about what you said, you know, is it true that you've tried everything and nothing (laughs) works? So I, I think we have to stop ourselves in a thought train like that and say, is that actually true? Mm -hmm. What would be a more accurate way of saying that? Instead of saying, I've tried everything and nothing works for me. So far, what I've tried, I haven't been successful. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. You know, I like this idea of asking questions, asking ourselves questions, which kind of puts us 
in a position of accountability to ourselves. Okay, why has nothing worked? Maybe you've tried a really mm-hmm. extreme hoaxy kind of diet fad that mm-hmm. promised all kinds of things it couldn't actually deliver on. Maybe it was yeah. the type of plan you chose. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe you picked a great plan, but you didn't stick to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think like you need to we... do more than more than two sure. days, right? Yeah. Like- <laughs> Yeah. Or, or, you know, like I did this plan and it didn't work, but you know, I did eat chips like every other night throughout the plan, which wasn't part of the plan. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we we have to be real with ourselves, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think maybe that's the tricky thing with like, there's so much information that's so easily accessible. So you could find information on probably hundreds of diets or ways of eating and A diet that would be perfect for like a 20 year old male bodybuilder is Mm. not going to work for a 40 year old woman who's trying to lose the belly fat. They need two completely different things. But if that's not clear, or you're just taking bits and pieces of that information and trying it, that doesn't work for me. But yes, you have two completely different goals, right? Yeah. And that actually reminds me of something that I think we should mention that's really important is that a big part of this program or this lifestyle is that we realize we're all different and we're all Mm -hmm. bringing different things into the journey with us, Mm -hmm. whether they be a health issue that needs to be understood and managed or Mm -hmm. just whatever our history is in terms of how we've lived up to this point in terms of food choices and things. So it's different for everyone. And just because someone says on the internet, this will work for you and it's worked for me, doesn't mean that it's going to work for every single human. We are so different. We're different ages. We're, we have different needs and we're in different places Mm -hmm. of readiness to do things. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think this program meets you where you are and is adaptable to what your needs are. You know, one of the things you do is you really listen to people's stories and really listen to what, what people are communicating to you. And then, and then you're, you go from there with, creating something that's going to be most beneficial to them with their current needs. Mm -hmm. And also my goal is to empower people to determine those things for themselves eventually. Right. So teaching teaching my clients to pay attention to the signals that their body is giving them, like Mm -hmm. their digestion, the bloating, the, their energy, their mood, like all of those things, you know, and their ability to, to reach the weight that they you know, that's, that's appropriate for them, like that kind of thing. And, and being able to tweak and make changes on their own and knowing what some of those signals can mean or what the possibility is, right? Because Mm -hmm. everybody's different, like you said, yeah. Yeah. So let's look at some of those phrases and see if we can shift the perspective or change the wording a little bit. So he says, I'm an emotional eater, or I'm a stress eater. What could they say instead? I imagine that I could say I'm pro- I, I tend to eat when I'm stressed. Mm-hmm. I notice that I eat unhealthy. I notice that I eat junk food when I'm stressed out. That is a true statement. Mm-hmm. And it's a fact versus an opinion, right? Like I think I'm an emotional eater is maybe an opinion mm-hmm. statement. And mm-hmm. it's you're biased towards maybe not being kind to yourself in that statement. And stating it as a fact removes some of that maybe like self-blame or self-shame that you yes, feel res- and responsibility right right like it removes that responsibility and it's conducive to action because i think when we're kind of oppressing ourselves with that kind of phrasing i am this this is who i am yes. then we feel incapable of change yes But if we state it as a fact, I notice that I eat chips and chocolate when I'm stressed late at night. That is information that is now available to you to -hmm. to start to ask questions. I wonder why I do that. Mm -hmm. I wonder how often I'm actually doing that. Maybe you start just noticing how often it happens. Maybe you start being more aware of your day or your emotional state, like before and after and during and helping you to take steps towards changing it as opposed to 
this is how I am. I'll always mm-hmm. be this way. I can't yeah. do anything about it because it's who I am. <laughs> yeah. It's and my, con- my concern is that sometimes people say those things as a, it's like a, I don't know if scapegoat is the right word, but like l- allowing that idea to let them off the hook. Well, there's oh, no I'm, point uh, in, there's no point in trying anything because this is just how I am. Right. I absolutely, I think it does both mm-hmm. things, doesn't it? I think it number mm-hmm. one paralyzes you into inaction because you feel yeah. ill-equipped and out of control. And then, uh, and then the other side of that is that, yeah, you've now let yourself off the hook to doing anything about mm-hmm. it. You've yeah. stated it as though it's true and yeah. you are off the hook and there's nothing that's going to change the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you continue in misery because it's not really what you want. <laughs> right. Right. So changing that language. So from an opinion so another, to a fact. Right. Exactly. So other phrases are, I don't have discipline. I don't have self-control. I don't have willpower. I can't stay consistent. They're all very mm. similar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, again, putting, putting it in in the past is well this this is what I've noticed about myself this is what I've done in the past now and then like you're saying ask them questions why or what can I do differently now what can I do going forward what can my next opportunity how can I do it differently mm. right like we're amazing adaptable humans we can all do something different in the next choice right I just thought of another one you used a really great word opportunity love taking situations that we can't do anything about and making it into an opportunity for something. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of along the lines of glasses, Mm -hmm. half empty versus glasses, half full. It's about your perspective that you, you you can choose a perspective. Like the facts are the facts. We can't change the facts, but Mm -hmm. I think like we could say something like, I'm so unhappy with the way things I could change that may be true, right? That may be a fact that I am feeling unhappy with the way things are. And then that could be either something that's chaining you down Mm -hmm. or you could, or you could say, it sucks to be me. This sucks because I'm dealing with this thing. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, this is an opportunity for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm making, I'm not saying that every hardship, you know, we can just see it as an opportunity just like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, hardships are hard, but I think rephrasing things, right? This is an opportunity for me to show myself what I can do, or this is an Mm -hmm. opportunity for me to make one change towards Mm -hmm. my goal. I think about myself with this yoga journey that I'm on for 30 days. You know, if I had gone into day 10 right away, I probably would have said, Oh, I can't do that move. Mm -hmm. That's too hard. Right. Those are some statements that we need to change. Like, I can't do that. That's too hard. Don't say things like that. (laughs) Instead, like I, I I can say instead, I have an opportunity to get myself to the place where I can do that. Mm -hmm. And if I start at day one, I know I can get there. I mean, you know, starting at day 10 is kind of like that, that ladder with the rungs too high to get to you're setting yourself up to be unsuccessful. Mm -hmm starting at one and and working your way and seeing it as something that's possible. You know, I love words like possible and opportunity, Mm -hmm. but there are some really dirty words that we want to tell our listeners not to use anymore. (laughs) Yes. Would you like to be the potty mouth in this situation? Yes. Okay. I will. (laughs) So I have two words. Maybe you have some to add to this two words that I want our listeners to stop using right now are try and hope. <laughs> now those sound like positive words. Yeah, but when trying meaning, is good. Yeah, when the meaning behind it means that you're you're not really fully hundred percent all in to getting your goal. Again, it's that scapegoat, right? If you say I'm going to try to eat healthier, that's not making a decision. What I'd like to hear people say is. I am making a decision to eat healthier. And what that means is I'm going to eat this and this and this. I'm going to avoid eating this and this and this, or I'm going to eat less of this and this and this like that, like be very specific. Just trying. That's not very helpful. And then the other word is hope. Sorry. No, you go ahead. Oh, the, the other word is hope. So when people say, well, I'm really busy right now, but hopefully next week or hopefully next month or hopefully after Christmas, right? No, again, you make a decision you just decide if, even if you do want to wait until next week or after Christmas or whatever, 
you, you make that decision. I am going to start eating healthier yes. after Christmas, right? Like yes. instead of hopefully, or hopefully life will be less busy when whatever, like. Hopefully I'll reach just, my goal. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, no. Hopefully I will. No, it's, I do it's, want you to feel hopeful, but don't yeah. use that word. <laughs> yes, you're not saying don't try, don't have yes. hope. I mean, that's yes. not what we're talking about here. The words try and hope, there's a place for those words and they are positive words. Yeah. But in the context of attaining goals, as you said, they sort of make you not as accountable to it. It, yeah. it gives you a back door out of it. If it's just going to be, if it just gets hard, I'm going to yeah, get going out the hard. back door and I yes. hoped, but then it didn't work out because yeah. I stopped. <laughs> oh, well, oh, oh well. well, yes, too bad. It's that difference between inaction and action. Yes. Because if yeah. I, of course, I hope to reach my goal, but if I just say, I hope to reach my goal, where is the action there? Where's the plan? There's no plan. Yeah. You're just yes. going to close your eyes and cross your fingers. And then when you open them, you'll hope that you got there. <laughs> yeah. You didn't do anything. Instead of saying, I hope to reach my goal. I would want to say something like, I know that if I stick to these uh, changes I've made, that I will reach my goal. I don't know mm -hmm. exactly when, but I know I will. I've got to mm -hmm. keep working towards it. I'm going to keep doing yeah. the work and I'm going to get there. Or yeah. I'm going to, tr like you said, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to fit in three exercises a week this week. You're not going to go from that conversation and do it. But if you say, I'm going to write down, I'm going to mark on my calendar right now, three times when I know I have availability to exercise and I'm going mm -hmm. to put it in my calendar that I have a meeting with myself or yeah. whatever. I have a, a you know, a, date. a, a yeah. date to do. Mm -hmm. And then now I know I can do it. And now there yeah. is no more excuses, but now that's hard for us to do because we are then accountable to ourselves and to yeah. anyone we might say that out loud to. And yeah. I think that's maybe where people use the language that they use that gives them that way out. Yeah. They don't want to be a failure again. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I challenge you to just change the perspective about this, then instead of feeling like you're a failure because you, you know, you had a day where you slipped up and you ate something that is off of the plan that you've decided, or you missed a workout, just viewing that as this is just an opportunity for me to be mindful and learn from what can you learn from that? You're not exactly you're not slipping backwards. You're not, nope. you're still on your, on your path. You just maybe slow down a little bit yeah. um, and just viewing it as, as it's all, it's all part of it. It's all part of the journey. This is going to happen. I guess that's the other thing too, is expecting it. When we decide we're going to eat healthy, it's like we expect to be perfect all the time. And if we're not perfect all the time, whatever that means, then we've failed. No, let's just expect that there are going to be times where you have no other choice but to eat a fast food hamburger. Maybe like sometimes that happens, right? Or like there are situations where you'll just, you feel like you're not motivated or you just feel like quitting. You're having a rough day. They'll just, there'll be days when that's going to happen. It just is. But rather than viewing that again as a failure, that's just part of it. We want to do fewer of those kind of activities and more of the stuff that brings us towards our goal, but it's all part of the whole journey. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and the way we talk about ourselves and our situation does affect the action or inaction that we take yeah. or opposite action, you know, moving away yeah. from our goals farther to stay in a habit or that we're trying to change. You see Rusty in the background there. I know I'm ignoring him <laughs> and he's scratching at the door. It's oh, really is he? Annoying. It's really annoying, <laughs> Oh, but he'll want to come oh, back wow. in if I let him out. So if, yeah. Well, you we should invite him on the podcast. Ooh. Hey, Rusty. Yeah. No. Yeah. So those are just a few ideas about how you can change the language, whether it's things that you say out loud or just in your head, right? What you say in your yes. head is just as important as what you say out loud when it comes to, you know, empowering or disempowering language, right? When we're talking about it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, remember, you know, expect things to not always go well, expect yeah. to have a few stumbles or to veer slightly off the path and, or to, have times where you've slowed down expect that to happen and then know in advance like I think if we actually stop 
putting the blame on ourselves and shutting down, Mm -hmm. those are all opportunities to reflect and refocus. You know, it's like that went wrong. I don't like how I feel now that that went wrong, but -hmm. rather than just blaming and and despairing, you know, realizing that there's something I can do. Okay. This thing happened. I'm Mm -hmm. disappointed about it. Mm -hmm. I'm learning that I don't want to, I, that that happened because X, Y, or Z, I, Mm -hmm. this is how I'm going to prevent that from happening next time. This is my plan for next time. I mean, when we have a plan, we are much more likely to be successful at whatever it is we're trying to do. Even if it's just getting through the day, Mm -hmm. even if it's getting up in the morning, Mm -hmm. having a plan and and tools. We typically know our pattern of behavior you know, and, and that's evidenced by the fact that people say things like I'm an emotional eater. I'm a stress eater. Like we know if we just think about it for a minute, we can usually predict what situations will act as triggers for us or which situations will cause us to go off plan or make decisions that won't help us get towards our goal. So be proactive. Imagine what, what you'll do in those situations, whether you, you know, like, so for instance, if you know that on Friday afternoons, like somebody brings donuts into work every, every Friday. Yeah. And you know that, that that's a weakness for you, that you really like donuts and that you're going to be tempted to eat them. Like, yeah. don't be surprised when Friday afternoon comes and somebody <laughs> brings those donuts in and you're right here, you have one in your mouth before you even realize it. Right. Yeah. Like, like we are not goldfish that have right. a two second memory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. We know so, it's happening. And know that that's going to happen, that you're that that's going to, so be proactive, either decide ahead of time that, okay. It's only once a week, I'm going to eat the donut and be yep. fine with it yep. or decide ahead of time that you're not going to eat that donut. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you're tempted? Have a plan, bring something with you to work that day that you love to eat that will, that you can eat instead, or don't go in the room where the donuts are or something like yep. think ahead and, and know what you can do in that scenario. Mm-hmm. That's much more helpful. And that's much more empowering, right? It's all about empowering you. To, to make better choices or to be happy with the choices that you make. So think ahead. Exactly. Yeah. Think ahead. Yeah. So one other thing that we were going to chat about is just about, you know, in relation to this, the stories that we, that we tell about ourselves. So that calling yourself oh. an emotional eater, that kind of thing all goes along with that, but also letting things like <clears throat> your past behaviors indicate what you'll do in the future so if you are are somebody who has always failed at healthy eating or anything like that you letting that that past experience prevent you from making better choices in the future like you don't need to do that you can change the story um Mm -hmm. or if you say you have a genetic predisposition towards being obese or something like that. And I I wanted to share my story about how I had genetic testing done just for fun. I just like, I'm curious about how all that fits with, with health and and lifestyle. And I worked with a naturopath and she told me that I had not one, but two genes that indicated I should be overweight and diabetic at at that stage in my life. And she told me that if I hadn't been eating healthy and changed the way I was eating in the last few years to help support my metabolism and blood sugar and weight and all of those things, that that that's likely what would have happened. And I say that just to show you that like there's a whole there's a lot that you have control over. And you, just because your genes indicate something is a high probability, it doesn't mean that it, that's the case. So you can't really use that as an excuse, right? And anything you should use that as a reason to take your health seriously and do whatever you need to do before yep. those genes express themselves in an undesirable way, right? Yeah. And yeah, we don't want to express ourselves that way. And I think you touched on some future topics too, that we're going to get into in the next few podcasts, excuse busters. Like what are some of the excuses that we're giving ourselves? And then what can we do about that? How can we kind of bust that myth, that excuse? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Know that it's, it's normal to have these excuses in our back pocket. We all use these things, but you know, we want to help you become aware 
and to like really take ownership of those things. And so we're not, we're not bringing up these things to make you feel badly about yourself. Like that it's really, again, about empowering you and awareness of your behavior, of your language, of your patterns is the first step to making change. You can't change something that you're not aware of. At least exactly. effectively, right? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. So, and I want to just take this opportunity just to mention about the change method progressive membership that I've started, you know, as I've been doing this work for a number of years, and what I've noticed is that most of the women who come to work with me, they're stressed, they're busy, they're overwhelmed. Are, they have trouble being consistent. They're, they don't always know where to start because there's so much conflicting information mm -hmm. out there. And so I created this membership, progressive membership, meaning that we start with one simple thing and we gradually build. It's sort of like habit stacking, but we do it in a, in a, I don't want to say slow way because that makes it seem like you won't make progress very fast. And that, that is really not the case. You can, you can make progress in terms of getting more energy, thinking more clearly, losing fat, but just doing one thing at a time so that it sticks, right? It's mm -hmm. easier to fit into your busy, stressful life. But it's just like, you know, they say like it takes 21 days to establish a habit, yep. right? So yes. we're, we're doing this slowly month by month, integrating these things and, and teaching you more and more tools and, and things that you can use to, to achieve those goals. And so all along to go along with the membership is the support and the accountability and, you know, group coaching calls and all of those things. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'll, I'll include the link below. You can check it out and see what it's all about and what's involved and, and what you get with that. But uh, I just wanted to make sure people knew that was available. Right. Um, it's a super fun and effective way to achieve your goals. And it's not overwhelming and it's yeah. not a, um, it won't overwhelm your budget either. So, yeah. yeah. And you don't stay overwhelmed. Like, I mean, you don't, you don't <clears throat> go into, you know, a change in lifestyle and stay in that state of being overwhelmed by the amount yeah. of information and not knowing where to start and everything. I mean, I could have checked all those boxes that you mentioned, the women who come to you with these things. Like I, I checked every single one, yeah. you know, and, and getting over, getting over that initial kind of introduction where all the information is, is there and you don't know what to do first. Like this, mm -hmm. this really helps structure that, doesn't it? And, and kind of like yeah. a slow release again, yeah. not slow in a, in a way that means no progress, but slow in a way that, that we slow cook food and it's yes. delicious and it's more nutritious and it's more beneficial yeah. with long lasting <laughs> effects. Right. Think about yeah. that ladder and how high the guy with the rungs close together mm -hmm. versus the person with the far apart ones, you know, we want to take those small steps, which will take longer, but we'll get there and mm -hmm. then we'll stay there. That's what we want. Yeah. You, yeah. And, and, you know, nothing comes easy. Nothing, nothing worth having is easy to get. You know, I think yeah. they, we have to be willing and reasonable in our understanding that it, it's going to take time and effort. Yeah. And also the women who come to work with me, their metabolisms are damaged from years of yo-yo dieting, eating certain ways. So it, it takes time for that to heal as well. It's a lot easier to stick to something when you're, you might not be seeing the obvious benefits right away, but if you're as part of a membership of a group that support you and tell you, this is normal, it's working. Just keep at it. Keep at it. Imagine trying to do that on your own. You mm -hmm. would probably quit after you know, maximum four weeks. Why, why would you keep going if you didn't think it was working? How would you know, right? Like, yeah, especially yeah, if you, if you yeah. need to allow that time. That's the other reason why I created that because I feel like women need support as they're going through that to know that it's they're doing it right. It's just taking some time versus doing some quick fix thing where you yeah. might lose a bunch of weight at the beginning or if that's your goal and then you can't maintain it because no. it's too restrictive. It's too difficult to follow or you lose weight so quickly that your body, it, it can't sustain it. And so then you gain all that weight back and probably more and versus the person who's doing slow and steady step by step by step, they're going to get to that goal and stay there. Like you said, whereas that other person might reach their goal faster, but they're not going to stay. 
So they've, yeah. it, they've essentially wasted their time and they're probably disappear- done some more damage at the same time. Right. Yeah. They're like yeah. disappearing rungs, you know? Yeah. Like the rungs are <laughs> then there. You just but then, fall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then you just fall back down. <laughs> yeah. That's not, that could be fatal. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. could be. be right. All right. So I think that's it for today. Just to reiterate. So we're just talking about the language that we use around our abilities, how we describe ourselves, whether we're an emotional eater or a stress eater, and how disempowering those types of phrases are, the language, and choosing something more positive, getting, not waiting for motivation to get started, making a decision and doing something now, even if it's just one simple thing, what's one thing you can do mm-hmm. to, to start making progress, to start building that trust in yourself and stop using the words try and hope <laughs> when it comes to your in, goals. In this context. <laughs> in this context, yes. And that it's normal to feel overwhelmed at the beginning. And that's why you just need to do one thing at a time. So I encourage you to think about that a little bit. Think about what your goal is. Maybe we can create a worksheet for this as well to help people really focus in on one goal. And what are three steps you can take to get to that goal? What are three things that you feel that you can manage that you can fit into your busy life and start making some progress? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we can share some of those things that we're doing ourselves. Yeah. I know I could share what that looks like for me in a future, future podcast for sure. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. Are we leaving with a teaser for what's next? Oh, (laughs) so you want to say the word because I can never say it right. <laughs> what word? <laughs> you know, the Danish word. Oh, oh yes. Hugo. Yes. Huga. We, we're going to invite you to get cozy with us next time. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. To... Yeah. Okay. So this is, you know, if you're not sure where to start, we will, if you don't already know what it is, we will explain Huga and how we've incorporated <laughs> it into what we do here, right? And how it helps. Yeah. Sure. I'm yeah. really and excited to talk about it. It's a topic I really like and I have found yeah. it super helpful for myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. All right. Okay. Until next time. All right. Bye for now. See you later. <laughs>